I have my before life and I have my after life. Um, February 1st, 2010, uh, I came home from work. I was a loan officer. I was working late that night. I was working a ton of hours that year because I was trying to get my daughter in, into college. And I worked late that night, and when I got home, my husband was laying on the couch watching TV. And I went upstairs and changed into my PJs, went down for my glass of wine, something to eat. And all I remember is that he got up and was very angry about something. I don't remember what. I, I don't think it was anything that drastic. I not like I was having an affair or anything. But he came up and started to choke me. And very, I mean, really choked me. And I automatically dialed 911. But I hung up right away because I knew he was a hunter. I was, I was used to having guns in the house. It was no big deal. But I also knew I better hang up the phone because if the police came, he would lose his guns and he could no longer hunt. And, um, and so I hung up the phone real quick. He left the room and in came my daughter. My beautiful 72 year old baby. And she usually went to yoga that night and decided to come home and make cookies. And she was all excited because I was like a cookie addict. And um, I said, Olivia, we're leaving here right now. I, I, so unfortunately, I, may, I, I will always question what I did, but I was in my pajamas, so I went upstairs to change. And you know what? It was an automatic, because many years, many years prior, uh, I used to have to leave once in a while, and that was what I would do. I would go upstairs and change and leave, and later everything would be fine. Anyway, she called 911 and came upstairs with me. In the meantime, my husband came up with a gun, shot and killed my daughter, and as I went towards her, he then shot me. So now my jaw was shattered and I have a bullet in my shoulder. I will never ever forget that day. I will never be over the guilt I feel that maybe at some point over the years I could have saved my daughter. I was not hit every day. It was not physical abuse. It was emotional. And so I want to talk about it to you because maybe either you, someone you know, is feeling like you know something's not right. And what I do share in common uh, with Malcolm and with Jody is that permanence, right? The, that reality that sets in for us that our life is before and our life is after. The family that existed before is different than the family that exists after. It's, it's through those stories that we learn about the cost of violence, um, but it's also how we learn and understand our individual responsibility to be active participants in the solution to it. So, and I really want to hit that home, right? We learn about the cost, we know about it, we, we see it on the news, we get immune to it, um, but if we walk away tonight with anything else, it's that we have a responsibility and an opportunity to change it. Um, and so, Joni, you honor Olivia by bringing us together tonight, um, and um, you provide us all kind of with that opportunity that momentum to work together. We serve people who had money, we serve people who didn't. Um, I've met women who lived in tents, and I've met women who lived in mansions. But the thing that was consistent is that um, they lived with isolation, they lived with fear, they lived in very dangerous situations, some turned lethal, um, some didn't, but the impact was continuous. But in either event, there was always resilience, there was always strength, there was always a confidence of self. When they were provided with the right support, when they were provided with kindness, and when people, their community, or their providers tried to empower them. Control is really a big piece. And whenever you send somebody um, trying to take control of you, even if it's not physical, like I said, that is some of the first steps 
of what we would call domestic violence. In some cases, it is domestic violence. Um, so if, uh, if you're in a marriage, per se, um, and somebody is you know, withholding money from you, who you are financially dependent upon, that is a form of abuse. If somebody is calling you names, talking about uh, you've gained this type of weight or something like that to make you feel bad, that's the type of abuse, that's a sign. If somebody is just trying to keep tabs on you 24-7, as I said, through text, through social media, phone calls, that's a sign right there, especially for our young people. Because uh, I think that what we have to understand is that this generation uh, is very unique. Um, and, and, and I'm young, but it even wasn't like this when I was in high school in terms of there is so much access to one another. So much access, nonstop. Um, and that opens up a lot of avenues for abusive relationships.